My experience with patients with RTS is I don't find that they're particularly aggressive or more challenging than a typical child. And I think just the gentle coaxing is probably going to get you better results, developing a rapport, playing with them a little bit, chatting with them before you start. They have a lot of different eye problems, and I would classify them into two major categories. One would be things that are a little bit more appearance related and may not have any functional, any uh, vision related uh, issues associated with those things, such as you know the, the, the shape of the eyelids, the, the brows. Then another category would be something that would be a little bit annoying and should be fixed, but it's not vision threatening either. And that would be tear duct obstruction, where they have tearing and maybe some mucus discharge because her tear ducts are blocked and so the tears can't flow down into the nose. She's had some uh, tear duct problems, um, had to get tear duct probing surgeries and things like that, so ophthalmology has been something for sure. And then the third category would be those things that could potentially lead to loss of vision, things such as strabismus, which is a misalignment of the eyes. Their eyes can be turned out, which is more common than when their eyes are turned in. Then the child can start to pick one eye over the other eye and then the brain doesn't get stimulated for both eyes. You can sometimes patch in and do other things to tie them over until they're older, until they potentially improve um, or can do surgery at a later time. When he was 11 months old, he got diagnosed then with the glaucoma. So that's been hard. That's been eight surgeries plus another 10 to 15 sedated eye exams so they can just take the pressure of his eye. A significant percentage of these patients will have glaucoma, which is elevation of pressure in the eye that can lead to damage to the optic nerve. And then another type of problem that can also be corrected would be if they developed a cataract. So some of these patients will develop a cataract, I think about 5%, but eventually they might need to have the cataract removed. You may have to put an artificial lens implant in the eye, just like you would for a typical older adult. Um, uh, who develops a cataract that's age-related. And another thing that's very, very easy is refractive error, which is just need for spectacles to fix nearsightedness, farsightedness, or astigmatism. That's a really easy uh, thing to, to do. Some of the other problems that you can't really fix would be a coloboma, which is a defect in the iris, so it looks like a keyhole, but that defect could extend further back, could involve the lens, could involve the, uh, the choroid, uh, which is one of the layers uh, that, that uh, support uh, the retina. Uh, the retina is like the film in a camera and uh, it's important for gathering light and image information and sending that to the brain through the optic nerve. So it's really up to the pediatrician and family practitioner to refer, but if the child has a diagnosis of rubenstein tabe syndrome, then I think they will need to get a full examination as soon as they are discovered to have that because they could have any of the aforementioned problems and, and not necessarily know about them.